Whether it's learning about earnings estimates, exploring the Zach's rank, or adding to your financial toolkit, get the education and resources to help you become a more successful investor here on Investing the Zach's Way. In this segment, Steve is talking about the Zach's rank again, but this time from a little bit of a different perspective. Now, not too long ago, you did a commentary about how the Zach's rank stock picking system was wrong 44% of the time. And to my surprise, the boss kind of like glazed over that. He kind of overlooked that. Now you want to talk about five limitations that the Zach's rank system carries with it. Are you trying to commit career suicide here? What's going on, man? No, no, it might seem like that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, 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 this is just another case of where I'm trying to give uh, a fair perspective of what the Zach's rank is about. A person has to know how it works and sometimes how it doesn't work to apply it successfully. So here again, we keep talking about the 30% annualized return. The better folks understand how to employ the system, you know, with its, uh, you know, with its shining moments and some of its warts too, uh, the better they are going to be able to achieve that exceptional return. Well, I commend you for your gutsiness. Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> so, share with us then the five limitations of the Zach's rank. Yeah, we're, we're going to start off with number one, which is uh, the performance is relative to the market. And this is one of the things I've talked to Len Zacks beforehand. So we say, uh, you know, a number one is a strong buy, and number two is a buy, and on down the list. However, he said he really debated early on whether he should use that kind of rating system, you know, buy, sell, hold, Mm -hmm. or whether he should go with outperform, in line with market, and underperform because the system is really about how how it does relative to the market. That's another way of saying when the market's going down, it's going to pull pretty much everything with it, including some of the best stocks, the stocks the best earnings outlooks. And so what I'm going to show here is a graph that I put together. Uh, we keep talking about since 1988, the performance of the Zacks rank is, uh, you know, the, the strong buy stocks is plus 30%. However, in that stretch, there's been five years that have been in the red. So I'm highlighting each one of these years and showing how the Zacks rank is done in each of those years. Um, in 1990, as you can see, we were pulled down into the red as well. But at the end of the year, we did have a positive return. As you go down the list, The market's been down five times over the last 20 years. We've only been down three of those times, but here again, in each occurrence, you go to the right-hand margin, you'll see that we have had an advantage of the market each time. So in the most recent year, market's down 12%, we're down 6%. Is that our shining moment? Is that something that we can, you know, wave a big banner outside the building? And the answer, the answer is no. But here again, would you rather be down 6% or down 12%? Or the one thing that's not on the slide is the Zacks number five ring stocks, the strong cells. Those are down 20% so far this year. So here again, a system that says, all right, the market edition is not great, but this is the best the market has to offer, minus six. The average stock's down 12. And oh, by the way, these terrible stocks, the one to stay away from, don't have them in your portfolio, those are down 20. So even in the worst conditions, the Zacks rank is being helpful to individuals. Well, you know, that does make sense. And all too often, even the good stocks get punished when the market, you know, takes a tumble. But that also does create buying opportunities for investors. Uh, So the next limitation then would be what? Uh, It is a short-term indicator. And so on the website and education, we keep trying to say it's really meant for a one to three month time horizon. And, and, and that's because that's the way Len tested out. He put together these factors of agreement, magnitude, upside, surprise that were indicative of future stock performance, but future stock performance really only looking out one to three months. So phenomenal tool for traders. But if you're a long-term investor, you're gonna find there's far too much turnover in the signals of the stocks. In fact, every month, uh, 60% of the stocks will change their rating. So, uh, sorry, 60% of the number one stocks will leave the list and a, new, and a new group of stocks will come on. So if you're a long-term investor, we're not trying to change who you are. You're just better off looking at the Zacks recommendation versus the Zacks rank. And for those who want to know more about the Zacks recommendation application for long-term investing, then be sure to check out uh, our education video. We did do an education right. video on that Zacks recommendation versus the Zacks rank. I just wanted to call that yeah. to your attention. So let's move on then to the number three limitation. Yeah, uh, the number three is that there's a little bit of a small to mid-cap bias in, in, in the Zacks rank. So here again, thinking about the four factors, agreement, magnitude, upside, and surprise, 
The stocks that are going to have the biggest measures in those uh, four factors are going to be smaller to mid-cap companies because they're going to have the most explosive earnings. It's just, it's just too hard for the Johnson & Johnsons and GEs to really have a 40% earnings surprise and see their earnings estimates go up that much. So here again, we're not trying to change the kind of investor you are. We're just trying to make you smarter in the way you do go to market. So here again, if you see yourself as a more conservative investor and you really want to shy away from the, some of the small and mid-cap stocks, then then fine. Th you're not going to find as many number one rank stocks that that are um, large caps, but you, if you expand your horizon to include Zach's number two rank stocks, which are still in the top 20% of our indications, which still have a return which is twice the market, which is I believe 19%, uh, going back, uh, you know, all these years, mm -hmm. then that's still a pretty good ground. So if you're going to be a more conservative investor uh, and want large cap stocks, expand to a Zach's rank of two in your search. You're going to find plenty of that meet uh, what you're looking for. All right, halfway there. Okay. Uh, number four. Uh, number four is that there's a little bit of an industry bias or or an overweighting of certain industries at any one time. What I'm saying is that. The factors that move the earnings for a company are qu quite often things that are happening inside their industry. The best example would be looking over the last three years that the price of oil has gone up dramatically, that all the oil producers have had phenomenal earnings estimate revisions and earnings increases. And quite a few have been in the Zach's number one ranked territory for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. So here again, one of the lessons that we all have to learn is let's keep our portfolio diversified. So overweighting in the energy field was not a bad idea, but do you want 50, 60, 70 percent of your money in that, right? And that's a lesson that we learned like with a technology bust. You know, it's great while it's going up, but we always have to remember that s someday that party will end. And if you take a look at those stocks, they have been down a fair amount of late. So you want to keep good diversification rules in place, even if there's so many attractive ones in that industry, there's X uh, number one ranked. I remember a few months back, you talked about how most investors right. or many investors don't diversify well enough and that uh, a lot of investors only know, you know, one to two stocks and they have a tendency to get married to them. Right. Uh, it makes it clear the importance of diversification right. as uh, to not have too many eggs, if not all of them, in the same basket. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so with that having been said, Limitation number five. Yeah, limitation number five is that the system is blind to everything but the four factors, agreement, magnitude, upside, and surprise. And here again, we have it, you know, a whole series of videos to explain each one of those individually, but there are four measures of earnings estimates and earnings surprises that Lens Acts prove to be indicative of future stock price performance. And so for the guy who says, well, I'm a value investor, um, where's PE or PEG or book value? they're not part of this equation. Or the person who says, you know, I'm more of a momentum player or a chartist, where are those indicators in here? And the answer is they're not. The Zach's rank is only focused on these four factors that Len found to be successful. And if you want, you know, to, uh, to be a value investor, you can do that with the Zach's rank. So you take the 220 stocks that are Zach's number one rank, and screen within that group to find those that have the value attributes you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can say the same for if you're a growth investor, if you're a chartist or a momentum player. The Zach's rank is the best starting point for your stock search and then narrow it down to find those that meet your unique uh, investing style. So information can be parsed out a lot of different ways. A absolutely, and then probably the, the research wizard is probably the best tool for that. And also we have some trading services, meaning where we, we pick stocks for folks uh, based upon value size. We have a value trader service, a growth trader service, and so on. So the people who want to employ the Zach's rank and a style at the same time can do so. All right, so despite these limitations, Remind us again, <laughs> if you would, why people should be using the Zach's rank to pick better right. stocks. So, so here again, e even with all these flaws, okay, and here again, anyone who tries to tell you that they have a system that's absolutely perfect and it's, it's foolproof and things of that nature, they're, they're just not telling the truth. And, and so I, I like sharing this information because it makes it honest, it makes it applicable for the person because they know what to avoid mm -hmm. when, when they're using the Zach's rank. But the reason why we use the Zach's rank, and here when 
we're coming back to our favorite topic, which is about performance. And the Zacks Rank model, you know, the, the thing you want in a stock picking model is two things. You want something that provides clear signals, okay, clear signals, which are the ones to buy, which ones to hold, which are the ones to sell, okay. So our stock rating system gives clear understanding of, of what that is. But what's even more important than clear signals are meaningful signals, meaning does a strong buy produce better returns than a buy? And the answer is yes. Does a buy produce a better return than a hold? Yes. Does a hold produce a better return than a sell? And does a sell outperform a, a, a strong sell? And the answer is yes. Meaning that each of the signals is indicative of the, of the likely performance of those stocks. And it is the most helpful of knowing which stocks to buy, which to hold, and which to sell. And that's what you want in a rating service, uh, system. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. The five limitations of the Zacks rank and why it's still a good system to use. Yeah. With Steve, I'm Terry Ruffalo.